Hey, what's up? It's Bill DeWeese, voiceover career coach and voiceover talent. And um, hope you're holding up well here during the, uh, the big quarantine, the lockdown. Lockdown is a strong word, but you get where I'm coming from. And uh, I've given up on shaving. I've even given up on wearing uh, pants. Uh, I mean, blue jeans. I'm, I'm wearing sweatpants. The problem with sweatpants, of course, is they expand with you. So Lord knows where I'll be once this is over and I decide to go back out in public again. I may have to send somebody out to buy me some new clothes. But all of that aside, I hope you are doing well. I hope you are staying healthy. And, uh, and this is being recorded on the Monday after Mother's Day. So if you're a mom, I hope you had a wonderful Mother's Day. And I hope that you did something special for your mom yesterday. Well, I want to share with you uh, a recent uh, comment from an email that, uh, that I received uh, to address a point uh, that I think is very important when it comes to voiceover. And those of you who are looking to start a voiceover career or build a voiceover career and trying to decide who do you trust, who do you not trust for information? It's a fair question. This comes from Dave. Uh, are you kidding me? It's amazing to me how many Experts there are trying to share their secrets for only $100, $200, or $300 a month. Save your time. I'm not biting. Move on to the next sucker. I meant client. If you are making as much money as you claim, why waste time teaching others how to do it? Just grow your own business. Dave. Uh, Dave, I mean, you, you make a good point, And believe me, I totally, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, because when it comes to when you, when you're trying to select somebody to help you with what I don't I don't care if it's voiceover or maybe you want to become a real estate investor or maybe you want to learn how to build houses I mean it doesn't matter fill in the blank you want to make sure the person you're working with is credible and not trying to rip you off and certainly it is a buyer beware market you need to do your your do uh, your due diligence and the question goes far beyond me it's a very uh, it's a broad reaching question. So the bigger question is, is your coach a player or a poser? And there are both out there and you do need to, 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 to dig deep and to figure out and know who's legit and who's not. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got another, here's another comment that came, uh, came at me. And when I say came at me, I mean, it like came at me on Facebook over the weekend um, from Christopher, if this guy was so successful, how does he have time to do these seminars and, and voiceover about voiceovers? Is he even repped by any of the major agents? Here are the facts. Nothing the suckster is going to tell you can't be learned from free on YouTube. In my opinion, he's a predator. On and on. Let's see here. Uh, here's the system. Do hundreds of meaningless auditions all day. Maybe get a job. Uh, also, can we see can we see his financials? Is he really making as money as much money as he says? Or is his real income coming from suckers? Hey, and lastly, what happened to just paying forward? My opinion, what do you all think? Okay, this guy, well, this guy, Christopher was just baiting me. Um, I think he, he needs he needs conflict to, to feel alive, I'm guessing. I hope that's not too harsh of a judgment, but I've kind of, I went back and looked at some of his posts. But there are some important questions, nonetheless, in here. Um, in terms of what I've paid forward or haven't, Christopher, you don't know, most people don't know, and that's, you know, that's, that's irrelevant in terms of fi my financials, what I am going to do, I will post, you'll see here, um, a letter from my, um, accountant verifying my income for 2018. And by the way, what you will see there, hopefully you can read it. It's just shy of $350,000. And that's my voice over, not my voice over training. It is my voice over income. As to being a predator, um, you know, why am I doing, if I'm so successful in voiceover, why am I doing this? That's a good question. You know, I remember back, I think it was in the eighties. Remember those old infomercials by a guy by the name of Carlton Sheets? You know, he, he had been successful in real estate and he was selling this course. And I used to always think, well, man, if the man was so successful. Why would he waste his time selling, you know, selling his expertise? Well, now, you know, 30 something years later, I get it. Uh, sharing and selling our expertise is what we do, all of us, for a living, uh, regardless of what that expertise is, whether it's flipping burgers or whether it's uh, understanding law or whether it's administering uh, medicine and health care. It doesn't matter. I mean, we all sell our time and our expertise for money. So having another revenue stream is a completely legitimate thing. But, you know, it's interesting. When I first started in voiceover, I didn't have an intention of teaching. I come from a teaching background. Uh, I was a college professor for 14 years and I taught communications and broadcast and um, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. 
And I once heard a saying that we're not what we do, but we do what we are. And the things that we are that are really deep in our DNA tend to find a way out. And that's what happened with me in voiceover as people began contacting me and, and saying, well, what is it you're doing that allows you to be successful? Because I've done A, B, and C, and I'm really struggling. And so I began to coach and help. And what, grew, what began as helping a few people has literally grown into helping thousands of people and creating a larger platform to be able to help more people be successful in voiceover. So uh, that's just my, that's my simple answer as to, to why I do it. Yeah, certainly I get reimbursed for it. I hope you get reimbursed for sharing your time and expertise as well. I mean, that's what happens in a free market economy. Uh, but beyond that, it's what I do. It's one of my gifts. It's what I'm good at. Yes, I think I'm good at voiceover. Uh, I may even be better uh, being a teacher. Uh, that's just my own personal opinion. Yours may differ. But that's those are the two things that I really focus my time and energy on, and that is teaching and recording voiceovers. So back to my original question, how can you verify whether the person you're working with, your coach, is a, is a poser or player? And here's the bottom line. Whoever you're working with needs to be able to produce the results that you're looking for. Now, let me, let me explain further. Uh, meaning that if you want to be, you know, if you want to be great at having a nice sounding voice and, and uh, maybe being really great at articulation and elocution, et cetera, then you find somebody that helps you be good at that. If you want to help uh, find somebody to help you be, to be a great performer, you, you do that. If you want to find somebody to help you make money in voiceover, then you need to make sure that they can do that. And yes, I'm a performance coach, uh, but perhaps more importantly, I'm a business and marketing coach. And so you should ask your coach, whatever it is, if, if you expect them to help you build a career and make money, you should ask them. They should be very willing to tell you what they made, you know, in the most recent, um, in the most recent tax year, I'd be able to pro provide documentation as to what they've made. Uh, that way, you know that they can do what they say. So there's being able to do what you say and there's being able to teach what you say. So do they have students that are successful? Uh, can they provide, uh, can they provide uh, credits of clients they've, that they've done recent work for? And I don't mean, you know, back in the 1980s or the 1990s or early 2000s. It's like, what are you doing now? Are, do you, are, they, are they aware of the market now? Are they relevant now in the marketplace? And can they, te can they teach you that? And in terms of Christopher's comment about is he repped by any major agents, that's an irrelevant question. Um, and if you follow the business and the market and you know what's going on in 2020, yeah, I mean, having, a, having, an, I mean, having an agent's fine. And I've got, I think, 14 last count across the U.S., North America, and Europe, but less than 2% of my income comes from talent agents. They're irrelevant to my business. And if you want to be successful in voiceover, uh, you need to, you can certainly use them as one spoke of the marketing wheel and, you know, one channel of, of revenue, but you have to, you have to be looking far beyond agents. And I have worked with many, and many, 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 many talented, even world-class students in terms of talent who are repped by major agents who make pretty much a goose egg when it comes to voiceover. And when they do get jobs. They're so few and far between. They, it's not their living. I'm not saying there aren't people who do it as a living, but I'm saying it's a very small percentage. The last I saw the, you know, the, um, going back to those who are strictly like union and repped by major agents. I saw a stat recently that says the average, you know, the average union actor makes between like five and $6,000 a year. If I'm wrong on that, please feel free to correct me below. But what I'm saying is there is a better and easier and more efficient way to be profitable in 2020. That's what I teach. So I make no apologies for, um, for creating voiceover training and for selling that. Uh, and I hope you don't make apologies for the work that you do. And I hope you expect to be reimbursed for your time and your talent. But I will say this, for those who can't afford a deeper dive into the content or more of my personal time, I have created a YouTube channel with over 600 voiceover related training and tutorials that are absolutely free. So I would encourage you to knock yourself out. I mean, please use them. And many have, if you can't afford, uh, again, my more, more formal programs that do require not only my expertise, but my time, because my time is extremely valuable based on what I do in voiceover. Uh, I've created the YouTube channel so that you can access these videos. 
and learn. I've got people who have built their own careers just based on the YouTube videos. Some people are very DIY. You give them a few things and they can take and run with it. Some people want to be plugged into a bigger system and with other people and to get more feedback. And that's great too. And I have that available as well. So again, that's not a defense of what I do. That's just an explanation of what I do. So again, fair questions when it comes to, um, you know, looking for a coach. Yeah. I mean, are, are, is the coach a player or a poser? Do your due diligence, ask the right questions and find out for yourself because your career is going to be, you know, is going to reflect very much those that you work with. And there are good coaches out there, but you've got to do your due diligence to make sure. So uh, I want to thank uh, Dave and Christopher for their comments, allowing me an opportunity to discuss a question that may be on many, many people's mind. And I do wish you great success in your voiceover journey. And please feel free to make as much use as you possibly can from this YouTube channel, which is absolutely free. Use it and share it with others. Thanks for checking out the video. If you like it, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and that you'll subscribe and that you'll share. And I look forward to talking to you again very soon.